Hello YouTube and my nine subscribers. Uh, back on this parlor guitar. Uh, getting ready to do some of the restoration on it. Uh, last time I talked about rehydrating the instrument and uh, I did mention that I was going to keep the strings on this to be able to take off the correct amount off the bottom of the heel. Unfortunately this particular guitar is so badly warped on its top deck here that that's not possible so we'll have to take the neck off first. I've already gone ahead and done a little bit of restoration work on some of it, and I'll just show you what that is here. These are the uh, three on the side called patent tuners, which I've already repaired and replaced. Nothing on them. They are absolutely 100% original. You'll notice that I've kept the patina in the middle here, just cleaning enough so that they're functional and useful because they'll be going back on that way with a full restoration. I've also cleaned up and taken care of this floating bridge here. And uh, it's not been resanded or anything. The way you do that is quite simple with a little orange oil and some beeswax. And a little bit of steel wool or a scotch bright pad will clean that right up real nicely like that. You don't want to lose that patina. And I've also gone ahead and removed the Oscar Schmidt tailpiece from this particular instrument and cleaned that up. It has a uh, silver nickel plating on it. And back in the day, if you were interested what these cost, they actually costed 25 cents, which is still here on the inside written underneath the dirt, if you can see it there. So let's move on up here and take a look at what I'm doing with the guitar. You'll notice I have this lamp right here, and that's I've used that lamp to warm up this fretboard to remove these frets, as you can see there on me. So what I'm going to do ahead is go ahead. I've had the light on there for a little while. You can see that this particular fret is up a little bit. So I'm going to take my little fretting pliers. And you're simply going to be able to just remove that right out of there. And because the glue is so old and so deteriorated on this instrument, that'll come off nice and easy for you. If it doesn't come off nice and easy, apply some more light to it, or basically the heat from the light bulb, using a 100 watt bulb so it comes out just like that. You don't want to apply a lot of heat or steam or anything like that to get this wood super saturated and cause it some issues. You'll see that all the frets have been removed. I'm also going to remove this walnut nut here. And you'll take a look at these fret markers here. Their unusual position at 5, 7, and 10, which was later moved back to 9 as I indicated prior. But these are not made out of celluloid or pearloid or uh, abalone or pearl. These are actually made out of clay, which dates this particular instrument from around the late 1890s to the early 1900s, around 1910. But because of its headstock and its slot, and it is a 20th century model by Regal, I know that this particular guitar was made between 1900 and 1904 when Regal was in Indianapolis before they became the larger Regal associated with Lion and Healy. So what we're going to do with this as well here to remove the rest of this neck and be able to remove this heel is quite simply the same thing. When I've already started on it, as you can see, the little painter's knife, which is very, very thin, only about 15 thousandths of an inch. I've slid that underneath here to remove some of the old crystalline glue. As you can hear, it's crunchy, it's under there, and it's coming free. And it's going to be done the same way. Simply going to put the lamp down here, uh, keep it up about maybe an inch or so above there until the temperature of this wood gets warm enough to actually loosen up that glue again. And then we'll be pushing the glue out of that joint, being able to remove this neck. Okay, that's one thing here. Now, when you go to reset this neck, what I have done is taken a drill bit, very small drill bit, only 59 thousandths, and I've drilled two holes in this last fret. One right here, as you can see, and another one right in here. And what these two holes are going to do is they're going to act like pins. So when I reset this neck, if there's any slop in this dovetail joint that's in here, I will use these to line that guitar neck back up through the body to the bridge where it's properly to sit instead of having it shift off left or right a little bit, 
which would cause problems with intonation. So let's just go back and apply a little more of that heat. And we'll see if we can't get the knife in a little bit deeper. Now this may take you quite a while. I've already been at this for close to 45 minutes, maybe an hour, and it's still not going to be quite there. But that is the technique of removing this unless you want to use steam, which some people do. You can put a hole through here and a hole through here with a steam needle, inject that into there using a jig to remove that neck, but I'm going to try to remove it with just the light. With an old instrument like this, you want to take the time to do this. If you try to rush through this, you're just going to end up breaking this, cracking it, uh, maybe tearing a brace off from inside here, something like that. Things that you cannot replace or are going to be a real problem for you to replace. If you're not real confident in this type of work, I would suggest you take it to a luthier, someone who knows how to do these things if you found that you have a very, very valuable instrument. This one itself costed about $4.65 in 1900. Uh, they were never really built to last but some of these are still around with all their original accoutrements like this one is. So I'm going to go ahead and restore this for my personal collection. All right, I've been able to get the knives all the way through now. Like I said before, that joint was so loose. And see what happens here, a little bit of work. Here it goes. Okay, <clears throat> that neck is free now. Take a look at the back of it. Here's that dovetail joint. It's a shorter dovetail joint. Got a little residual wood on it yet. And you can notice the back of this, it's not ebony at all. This is actually something what they call pear wood, which they used to dye black to make it look like ebony. And like I said, on the cheaper guitars. So once this is reflattened and everything and uh, fixed up nice, I'll have to re dye that black. But that's the, uh, let's take a look at this body then. Uh, you can see the body is really warped badly. This is why I have to repair this first the other way. Um, here's the two little holes I told you about to help reset the neck in its proper place. But you're asking if I have to take this top off here, what good are these holes? Well, what I'm going to do is in this heel block, I'm going to put two other holes up here. So when I replace this top back onto the body, I will use those two with pins to line them up to put the body back in its correct place with the top. Um, it takes patience to do this stuff if you don't have the patience and you do have an old guitar like I said you found one that you really like a lot uh, to have these things done and repaired it's quite costly so you want to evaluate if it's worth it to you to have it repaired or if it's just worth it for you to hang it on the wall to look at it um, if that's something you want that's fine that's just strictly up to you but if you're not interested and you're not really sure how these do these things I would take it to a, a very good luthier, someone who's got a good reputation locally to help you restore it, and uh, they are quite costly to restore. This is not cheap to do this sort of things. Thank you for watching this part of the reconstruction of this particular guitar, and if you like the videos here, hit that subscribe button down below there. This is Ralph Grammel for A Customs Handcrafted Guitars, and remember, if you get a chance, we'll shoot you out as much video as we can, and just because it's old doesn't mean it's worth a lot of money.